Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Hundreds pack a Dearborn school tonight in discussing banning books. Some in attendance booing those in favor of keeping the books and those voicing support for LGBTQ. Plenty of punches thrown back and forth tonight in Grand Rapids. She's going to try to attack me tonight to distract from her broken promises. Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Tudor Dixon sharing the stage for one hour with both candidates trying to paint the other as radical. Mrs. Dixon is either woefully underinformed about the office she's running for or she's lying to you. Well, for the first time in Michigan history, two women have the gubernatorial nominations of the two major parties. Meeting tonight on a debate stage in Grand Rapids, Mara McDonald live there at this hour. And Mara, tonight's debate comes just 26 days until Election Day. We had to wait a while to get here for this first one. Devin, I'll tell you what, if anyone thought that this was going to be some sort of kinder, gentler debate because you have two women helming the two major parties here, they were sadly mistaken. Take a look. For many of you, it's the first time you're hearing from me directly. Dixon's campaign has not been able to fundraise and is at a serious cash disadvantage versus Governor Whitmer. Tonight was an opportunity to showcase herself, and she did, extremely well prepared and on the attack for the entire hour. In her first answer, she's already being dishonest. This is obviously going to be a theme for the night. I think it's really ironic when Mrs. Dixon stands here and says that she will accept the vote, the will of the people. This is a candidate who still denies the outcome of the 2020 election. This is a candidate who will not pledge to accept the outcome of the November 8th election. Back and forth all night long, lobbying haymakers. What a debacle to have eight and a half billion dollars fraudulently sent out. Now I've got people bringing bills from the state up to me, begging me to forgive the unemployment that she's trying to get out back. She is too dangerous and too out of touch to be trusted with protecting our kids. She'll put the Second Amendment before second graders every time. We cannot let that happen. Because we know the governor came out and said that she supports the spirit of defund the police. In fact, we know that when we were all locked down, she went out and marched with folks who held up signs that said defund the police. My opponent is long on rhetoric and short on facts, and that's okay. I gotta tell you, as a former prosecutor, I have sat with our law enforcement. I have worked arm in arm with them. And that's why the budgets that I have written have been focused on supporting. Back here live, Tudor Dixon rolled into tonight as if this debate and her, and her campaign depended on it. Um, it, it, it was an, uh, an, an appearance here that was markedly different than what we saw out of her in the GOP primary debates. Now, whether this changes things for her and the GOP donor class returns, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. We're live in Grand Rapids tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. That's so right, Mara. She's really struggled here to raise money financially. We'll see if uh, money starts to come in here with, as I said, just about a little more than three weeks to go. All right, let's move now to Dearborn, where hundreds gathered tonight in a very spirited evening to discuss banning books in schools. At issue, six books some say are inappropriate for school-aged children. Those books are Push, Lovely Bones, Eleanor and Park, Red, White, and Royal Blue, This Book is Gay, and All Boys Aren't Blue. They're currently under review. Tonight's meeting at Stout Middle School, wrapping up just moments ago. Pamela Osborne is there live, and uh, Pamela, things got very heated at times. They did, but between security that was hired and Dearborn police, there were about 12 different police officers, security people here, so things didn't get too out of hand, although there were quite a few disruptions. The board, by the way, they don't have any say in this review process, but still they listen to hours and hours of comment from people concerned about removing those books from the shelves and people who want to see them stay. It's very antagonistic. We met Lisa Goddard, a mother of five former and current Dearborn Public School students outside of Stout Middle School after what she saw Monday. She wanted nothing to do with Thursday's continuation of that meeting, which ended abruptly when things started to unravel. The people who really lose in this scenario aren't the adults who are all yelling at each other. It is the kids. This teen who identifies as queer and transgender shouted to be heard as adults booed. Had I been aware of the books and resources available to students in the libraries. I have no doubt I would have had an easier time except 
interrupting myself and relating to Please allow the speaker to speak. Those against the books that focus on LGBTQ issues and experiences say it was about the explicit nature. I'm a 43-year-old man and I'm embarrassed to say this stuff. And yet you say it's okay for this to be in the hands of my children. Shame on you. I'm not against the gay. I'm not against anything. I'm against the books. Others don't see it that way at all. So let's stop pretending this is about protecting children from books. We all know this is about erasing our LGBTQ students and staff. It was literally written on signs people brought to the meeting on Monday. Others argue parents concerned about the book should opt their child out. Parents should absolutely have an active role in their child's reading and education. But no parent should be able to tell another parent what their child is allowed or not to read. Those who believe the books belong say other parents should have no say over what their children read. And I, for one, won't give up my rights as a father to anyone whose parenting skills are so fragile their teenagers can be undone by ink on a page. The Teachers Union, the American Federation of Teachers, went on the record saying it supports staff members, students, teachers, LGBTQ community members um, over political divisiveness. Now, I do want to mention here, they say that they think the board has done a good job with creating options for parents who have concerns about these books, which, by the way, in the future, after this, any books that are uh, under review, they're going to remain on shelves right now. The books that are under review have been pulled. Reporting live in Dearborn, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Very passionate on both sides. Pamela, we appreciate it. We are also following breaking news tonight out of North Carolina, where five people, including an off-duty police officer, have been shot and killed in a neighborhood in Raleigh. After a three-hour manhunt, police do now have a juvenile suspect in custody. Two other people, including a, a canine officer, were wounded and taken to the hospital. So far, police have not released any information about what may have led to the shooting or what a possible motive might be here. We'll continue to follow it through the night. An update coming bright and early tomorrow morning on Local 4. An Oxford Township teen is arrested at his home for allegedly posting anti-Semitic threats on social media. 14-year-old boy accused of posting pictures of three handguns claiming he would kill people of Jewish descent at the Legacy Center. When Oakland County deputies went to the Legacy Center on North Lapeer Road, nothing unusual was found. But shortly afterward, deputies went to the teen's home, finding three handguns that belonged to his father, including live rounds in the boy's room. Right now, he's being held at Children's Village without bond. Today, all nine committee members investigating the January 6th attack at the Capitol, voting to subpoena former President Trump in for his role in the insurrection. That vote coming at the end of today's proceedings, likely the committee's final investigative hearing. The committee pointed to evidence the former president knew that he lost the 2020 election, but planned months in advance to declare victory anyway. The committee today also releasing new video of congressional leaders inside the Capitol during the riot as they pleaded for help. Why don't you get the president to tell them to leave the Capitol, Mr. Attorney General? They're putting on their tear gas masks. It was just horrendous and all at the instigation of the president of the United States. It's all video we hadn't seen before. Sources telling NBC News the subpoena could be issued in the coming days. President Trump responded on social on his social media site by asking why the committee waited until the very end to subpoena him, calling the committee a total bust. Tonight we are hearing from Sierra Milton for the first time since police announced the search for her daughter's remains is over. Police have been searching a Macomb County landfill for the remains of 17 year old Zion Foster from East Point. Foster disappeared in January. Her mother not getting the closure she hoped for. Can't find her. Can't find a piece of her. <laughs> So I'll right. forever know that that's where my baby is supposed to be. It's heartbreaking. Foster's cousin, Jalen Brazier, is doing 23 months in prison for lying to police. He claimed the two were smoking marijuana before Zion became incapacitated. He panicked and put her body in a dumpster. Police say they are continuing, though, to investigate. President of Michigan State University announcing his resignation suddenly today by sending a video message to students. Samuel Stanley saying he's lost confidence in the Board of Trustees. 
I, like the Michigan State University Faculty Senate and associated students at Michigan State University, have lost confidence in the action of the current Board of Trustees, and I cannot, in good conscience, continue to serve this board as constituted. Stanley's resignation comes after some board members criticized his leadership, including his handling of sexual misconduct issues. His resignation will not take effect, though, until 90 days from now.